Hi, it's Tammy, NZ Gastric Sleeve. Just thought I'd come on and make a bit of an update video following my dietitian appointment for my pre-op appointments. Um, so I actually had this last Wednesday, so I have been a bit slack in coming on and, and, and making this. Um, I was hoping to be able to come on at the same time to say I was approved for surgery, but um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. So um, I had my meeting at the dietitian. Um, she was really positive. Um, she was... Um, very positive about the the things that I've been doing. Um, I've been tracking my fitness pal. I've been um, also tracking uh, Fitbit, um, both scales and pedometer, um, to really get a good idea. Um, I also bought the premium membership of the Fitbit stuff, so when I went in, I was able to hand over basically the last two weeks worth of. <laughs> All the, f all the food that I've eating, how many calories I've been getting in and um, all the different levels of protein and vitamins and that sort of thing um, as well as my activity levels so um, she was quite um, supportive um, I mean over that entire period I hadn't lost it oh, according to my scales I'd lost like a kilo um, but not really as much as I should have been losing for what I was eating as opposed to what I was doing for those two weeks. So it's, again, quite frustrating. Um, she actually said to me that it poss possibly um, I was not getting enough calories on some days, as there were some days where it was closer to a 1,000 calories, um, mainly because I don't eat large quantities now, um, which is a little bit scary about a post-surgery because... Um, yeah, I can quite easily not eat a lot now, so um, the key for me will be getting into routines. Um, so she basically, the first half was kind of finding out all the information that she needed, um, hopped on their scale, which was two kgs heavier than my scale at home, but um, so that was a bit disappointing at that time. I was a hundred, I'd got on the scale in the morning and my scale said I was 111.5 and their scale said 113.5 so that was a bit disheartening but whatever um my uh, even my home scale so since that since those 10 days I went up to 212.5 and back down to I think it was 111.3 this morning so um it's it's a lot of ups and downs I think my body just um doesn't really want to move from this weight at the moment so um we'll see what happens um so, and then she basically ran, ran down um, all the things that I need to know for post-surgery. But I'll get to that a little bit later. So, um, basically at the end of it, she said that she was happy with um, putting me forward for surgery. But she needed to meet with the counsellor that I'd seen and the surgeon just to discuss whether they're going to sign me off or whether... Um, she said that there wasn't anything from her point of view that I needed to do extra um, but it just came down to whether the counsellor wanted anything additional done prior to sign off for surgery. Um, at that point I'll get um, um, scheduled an appointment to go and see the surgeon. Um, so um, the disappointing thing at that stage was she said it'll either happen today if she can find the time to see the, the two people or she was going to be on leave for two weeks so um, potentially that conversation hasn't happened yet. Um, I And so then once that conversation does happen a letter gets sent to my doctor. So nothing actually comes to me directly um, other than the appointment time for the surgeon so um, it's up to me to follow up with my um, primary physician. Um, I actually was going to call them today, this afternoon, um, but we had quite a large earthquake here this afternoon. We had a 6.6. .6. Um, 
which is a bit scary. It's uh, we had a few earthquakes about a month ago um, that were slightly smaller than this one. Um, pretty scary. I had a day off work while they checked all the buildings in town. Um, New Zealand's built on fault lines, so it's not surprising. Um, Wellington is like built on one massive fault line, so um, it is something that Wellington's prepared for, but it's been a reminder in the last month around kind of where we're, where we're at and that sort of thing. So I was actually at home this afternoon when it happened. I took the day off to do, um, to do some assignments that I need to do um, for the quail that I'm studying at the moment. But um, my building got evacuated and that sort of thing. And then I was on the phone to my mum. She rang just to make sure that I was okay. And she's like, oh, have you rang the doctor? I'm like, oh, I'd forgotten. But... I certainly, certainly couldn't do it now because my doctor's actually in central Wellington. So um, so I have yet to find out whether that actually happened last week or whether I'm up for another week and a half, two weeks wait before finding out whether I've been approved or not. Um, so again, the waiting continues. But um, if, if I am approved, it's probably looking schedule-wise to be around late October, November um, for surgery, um, which is still not far away. It'll definitely be this side of Christmas, um, as long as the doctor approves approves that. Um, once I see the doctor, the doctor will decide how long a pre-op diet I have to be on. So the pre-op diet here is... Fast. Um, I don't know whether that's backwards to you. Um, so basically, that's a, a program which is based on 800 calories a day. Um, it is three products, so either um, three shakes. Um, that's what's provided through the the um, the, the the system. Um, they only provide vanilla and chocolate. You're not allowed to add anything to them other than water. Um, but you can purchase OptiFast bars or soups if you want to supplement them. Um, I will probably will buy some bars um, because that's probably what's good for me for breakfast. Um, but the shakes are fine for the rest of the day. And then on top of that, um, you're allowed two cups of... Um, veggies a day um salad or veggies um low starch so um basically i've got a list here and they're things like alfalfa sprouts asparagus beans bok choy broccoli brussels sprouts celery cabbage capsicum carrots cauliflower cucumber eggplant garlic lettuce leeks mung beans mushrooms onions radish shallots, silver beets, snow peas, spinach, squash, tomato, watercress or zucchinis. So from that um, you can either have them on their own or you can make something from it. So you also allowed stock cubes, salt, salt and pepper, chilli, soy sauce, lemon juice and vinegar. So um, I should be able to make some quite nice vegetarian kind of stir fries or something. Um, or salads. Um, so what I'm thinking I'll probably do is I'll probably have a bar for breakfast. Um, I don't tend to eat a lot in the earlier parts of the day. So I'll probably have a bar for breakfast, um, maybe a salad for lunch if I'm at work. Um, thinking about probably having a shake kind of mid-afternoon. Um, just to curb that hunger because I do tend to kind of eat most of my calories in a day after four o'clock five o'clock so later in the day so if I have a shake at two and then I make some sort of stir fry or soup out of those veggies for dinner and then have another shake after dinner um, is what I'm thinking to kind of space it out over the day um, I think I should be okay on that but We'll see. So basically the surgeon will decide how long I have to do it. Um, it'll either be between two and six weeks. I'm thinking I'll probably be three or four weeks. Um, but we'll see when we see the surgeon. Um, so yeah, and so basically the... Um, 
the nutritionist run over that sort of stuff as far as the pre-op diet. Um, if I am approved for surgery, I won't get to see the nutritionist again until week four post-op. So basically that's the only time to, for her to give you the rundown on what you need to do for a pre-op diet. Um, and then I get to see her again just before I go on soft foods. So basically under um, my surgeon's program, Day zero or the day of surgery is just sips of water and ice cubes. Um, the next day you're taken for a scan um, and, and barium swallow around just to make sure there's no leaks. Um, and once that's been approved you're on a, a clear liquids diet for that day. So um, broth, water, um, Powerade kind of... Um, liquids um then the next day is free fluid so so any liquid that's at room temperature so soups optifast um shakes tea coffee low fat smoothies it says here that's quite interesting but again day two you're still in hospital so um you get what you're given <laughs> basically um, and then day three which is the day you discharge you move on to puree so that does differ quite a bit from some of the videos that I've um, seen um, especially from the US and Canada Mexico um, you're on to puree at day three which is a lot lot faster than than what I've seen elsewhere but then um, having that longer pure um, pre-op diet might have something to do with it not too sure, um, but it's equivalent of half a cup, so um, is what they're saying on the puree um, kind of food. And then at week four, which is the, when you get to see the nutritionist, that's when you go on to soft foods, and then from there you just start introducing your harder foods. Um, so on my little bit of paper, it kind of talks about some things that I can eat during that pureed phase and th things to avoid um, and basically it really comes down to high protein, low fat pureed foods so your low fat yogurt, milk, cheese, um, cottage cheese, porridge made with low fat milk, hummus, scrambled eggs, poached eggs, pureed meats, canned meats, um, well pureed meats from a can is probably fine. Um, smooth soups, um, uh, pureed vegetables, potatoes, pureed fruits, smashed wheat bix, um, then low fat sugar drinks, low calorie drinks, water, herbal tea. So there's a little bit of a sample menu here. Um, and from this, I, from the sample menu, I don't know how you're going to get your 60 grams of protein in, so a little bit concerned about that, but I'll have a little look at that. Um, they also recommend while you're on your protein diet, uh, puree section of the diet, that you're allowed three snacks a day, so they're recognising that you're getting so little in one to two tablespoons, they say, at a time that that you really do need those additional kind of foods and then from soft foods um, so I actually last week went to the supermarket and bought some little um, 65 and 80 gram, 5 gram little tins um, of chicken I'm not a fish person so things like tins, salmon and tuna I don't know maybe if my tastes change I, I will try it but um, it's not been something that re I've really liked so far. Um, but what I did buy is little cans of chop chop chicken, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Huge amounts of protein, perfect kind of sizings. I can see me eating a lot of that. Um, and that's probably about it. I'm just under for 15 minutes, so I'm going to stop it here. I'll see you later. I'll um, talk to you once I have got being confirmed for surgery. See ya.